In this tutorial, we will see the condition at which the efficiency of a transformer will reach the maximum value. The efficiency of the transformer is written as B2 I2 cos phi 2 divided by V2 I2 cos phi 2 plus Pi plus I2 squared R2E. In this V2 is the terminal voltage across the load. I2 is the load current and cos phi 2 is the load power factor and P is the ion loss and I2 squared R2 is the copper loss. If we see in this equation the efficiency is the function of I2 as by assuming the terminal voltage and the power factor as a constant parameter. So now we will plot the graph between the load current I2 and the efficiency. When the load increases the load current will increases at particular point of time the efficiency will reach the maximum value. So the load current at which the efficiency reaches the maximum value is the maximum load current which is denoted as I2M and the corresponding the maximum efficiency is denoted as eta max. To obtain the maximum efficiency we have to differentiate this efficiency with respect to I2 and we have to equate this to 0. We assumed the terminal voltage V2 and the power factor is a cos phi 2 is a constant parameter only the efficiency will vary with respect to I2. Now we will differentiate this d by d I2 of efficiency formula is V2 I2 cos phi 2 divided by V2 I2 cos phi 2 plus ion loss Pi plus the copper loss I2 squared R2E. So we have to differentiate this efficiency formula and we have to equate to 0. We know that the d by dx of u by v is equal to v into du by dx minus u into dv by dx by v square. We are going to apply the same formula here. So d by dx of u by v is d into du by dx. So here v is the denominator portion. So write the denominator as it is v2 i2 cos phi 2 plus pi plus i2 squared r2 e into d by dx of u. So now we have to differentiate this u with respect to i2. So the value will be v2 cos phi 2 into di2 by di2 is 1 minus u. u is v2 i2 cos phi 2 into d by dx of v. Now we have to differentiate this the denominator portion with respect to i2. So v2 i2 cos phi if you differentiate with respect to i2 we will get v2 cos phi 2 p is the constant so we will get 0 plus if you differentiate i2 squared r2e with respect to i2 we will get 2 i2 r2e now we have to equate this to 0 here v2 cos phi 2 is common term in both sides take v2 cos phi 2 outside So we will get V2 I2 cos phi 2 plus Pi plus I2 squared R2E. So we took the V2 cos phi 2 outside minus in this we took V2 cos phi 2 outside. So we have I2. So I2 into V2 cos phi 2. So minus into plus minus. So minus 2 I2 squared R2E equal to 0. If V2 cos phi 2 goes this side it will be 0. So B2 I2 cos phi 2 plus Pi plus I2 squared R2E minus V2 I2 cos phi 2 minus 2 I2 squared R2E is equal to 0. V2 I2 cos phi 2 V2 I2 cos phi 2 will get cancel each other. So we have Pi 
minus i2 squared r2e minus 2i2 squared r2e will be i2 squared r2e equal to 0. So which is equal to pa is equal to i2 squared r2e. So i2 squared r2e is nothing but the copper loss. So the condition for the maximum efficiency is the iron loss should be equal to the copper loss. The condition for maximum efficiency is the copper loss should be equal to the iron loss. So the P copper copper loss should be equal to the iron loss. So in this point the current I2 will attain the maximum value when the copper loss is equal to the iron loss. This is simple. Just differentiate the efficiency equation with respect to I2 and equate it to 0 because the efficiency is the function of I2. Efficiency will vary with respect to the load. So if the load varies, the load current will be varied. So that's why we are differentiating the efficiency with respect to the load current and we are equating it to 0 by assuming the B2 and cos phi 2 is a constant parameter. In this PA is the ion loss, I2 squared R2 is the copper loss, R2 is the equivalent resistance referred at the secondary side. Then I2M is the load current at which the efficiency reaches the maximum value and we are denoting it as the I2M and the maximum efficiency we are denoting it as the eta max. The final condition is the copper loss should be equal to the ion loss. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe for more videos. Thank you.